Inspiring you to set the marketplace ablaze in partnership with an awesome and limitless God. This is the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast, and this isn't business as usual. Here's your host and Chief Fire Igniter, Shay Bynes. Welcome back to the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. This is your host, Shay Bynes, and our goal here is to inspire you to operate your business completely yielded and in partnership with our awesome and limitless God. This is our first episode of 2020. So happy new year. I know that I am in great expectation for this year for all the goodness that's in store. There is a rising move of entrepreneurs all around the globe that are posturing their hearts and fixing their minds on what's on the father's heart for people, for families, for industries, for cities. I mean, we're seeing more entrepreneurs shift from doing business simply for the glory of God to actually doing business with him, led and empowered by the Holy Spirit from God's rest and by his grace. And so I am just honored to be a part of it. I'm excited and I hope that you are too. Today's conversation is so rich. It is with Dr. Melody Hilton of Hilton Consulting LLC. And I resonated so much with her heart for valuing humanity just as our father does and really carrying his heart to the people around her through the work that she does. Uh, She works with industry and government leaders around the globe. She is truly a fire starter, you know, really demonstrating God's presence, his power, his purity, and his passion. And I'm glad that I get an opportunity to introduce her to you today and that you'll be able to receive so much Uh, wisdom from the chat that we had. And I pray that it's going to both encourage you and ignite you into a deeper partnership with God in your business. But before we get started, I want to make a fun announcement. We're launching a second podcast. Yes, that's right. An exclusive podcast. And it's called Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Insider. It's really for those of you who love this podcast love what's going on with Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur, but really want to go deeper into what we're experiencing and learning as Team KDE, as we are partnering with God and growing this movement. It's been an ongoing adventure and it has become increasingly more interesting. I'll also be sharing my notes and any transformational insights from the books that I'm reading. It's just going to be a blast. I'm going to have some candid chats with members from the team, and it's really going to allow us to keep the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur podcast focused on its specific mission while giving us the freedom to share a lot more that we'd love to share about what's going on behind the scenes, what we're learning ourselves doing business in partnership with God. And for those who desire to go on that ride with us and learn along the way, we want to have an opportunity to do that with you. So anyway, You can get all the details and sign up for just as little as $5 a month at kdeinsider.com. Now let's get started with today's conversation with Dr. Melody Hilton. Listen in and enjoy. Dr. Melody Hilton, how are you? I'm awesome. How about you? I'm doing really great. And so it is a pleasure to have you joining me on the podcast today. You and I had a wonderful uh, our chat a couple months ago, uh, Chrissy Nelson, who's a mutual friend of ours, connected us. And so I'm just looking forward to kind of digging into your story and what it's been like in this journey of doing business in partnership with God as an executive coach, a behavior analyst, and all the other goodness that you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get started. How about you share just how you got started in the work that you're currently doing, how kind of God led you into it? Well, I was in government uh, before I even knew the Lord. When I was young, I moved to D.C. and worked in government. And and then after leaving D.C., I I did things in business. And then uh, I went into full-time ministry with my husband, and we started a church. So we've been in ministry like 40-some years, have a local uh, church. But about 20 years ago, there was an itch I could not scratch or scratch I could not itch. Either way, I was (laughs) was totally... Um, I loved what I did, but there was a part of me that was not being expressed. And I didn't recognize that that was God's calling bubbling up on the inside of me, not just what I would do for at that time, but what he called me to do even throughout the rest of my life. 
And so I launched a consulting company because I've had a passion for leadership. I've had a passion for justice, which my definition is power used for good. Mm. And so if I can influence leaders to use their power for the good of those they lead, we can change society pretty yes. rapidly. And so that was like the core message um, that I brought uh, to the table through my consulting company, uh, whether it was business, government, or the educational system. Those are the three areas that I'm very, very passionate about and impacting the leaders in those areas. You know, if the righteous rule, people rejoice, correct? So if I can touch governments, not just U.S., but international governments, then uh, then the principles of the kingdom can shift their ways of thinking and shift the way they legislate. Yes. Which can impact a whole nation. Uh, businesses, whole cultures of businesses and organizations can change. And can you imagine our teachers carrying a justice motivated mindset and truly valuing the students, not t telling them what to think, but teaching them how to think? Yes. Uh, they can use their platform for the good of a generation that is rising up in our nations. So, those three areas have been my heartbeat. And so I did that through leadership training. I did it through behavioral analysis, whether that's personality assessment, or I do something called the core value index, which discovers our innate unchanging nature. Uh, it's not what we do to meet our needs. It's not what we adapted, but it's woven in our DNA uh, to show us this is our contribution to society. It's one of those validating tools, and it's I use it in all those different spheres of influence. And that's a part of the behavioral analysis part of it. And, um, and so that's something I've done for about 20 years. And how the Lord brought, really stirred that inside of me was a huge defining moment in my life. Uh, about 20 years ago, I was in Edinburgh, Scotland, and I was at the castle of Edinburgh. And there were the crown jewels of Scotland. Okay, ladies, we love this, you know, and the jewels and all those things. And right aside of the jewels was this big, ordinary looking rock. And I thought, what is this rock doing here? And I learned it was the stone of destiny. Hmm. And that's where the kings and queens of Scotland uh, would sit upon that stone to be coronated king or queen. And when they, when they sat upon that stone, I learned it. It was said it was no longer about them, but it was about the kingdom, the kingdom of Scotland, the people of Scotland, and the land. And the power of God hit me, and I just began to cry right there in the castle. And I thought, the Lord spoke to me, and he says, when you gave your life to me, it was no longer about you, but it was about the kingdom, it was about people, and it was about the redemption of the land. That's when I knew I had to go into the marketplace because I wanted to bring the kingdom there. Yes. I wanted to touch people. Yes, I love pastoring people in the church. I love being a Christian. I love equipping the body of Christ. But when I can go into darkness and be a light, that's touching people, uh, discipling nations, as it were, and then to redeem the land. Yeah. I want to see our nations partner with us, not resist us. Partner so with the kingdom, not resist the kingdom. You know, one thing I think it's important just to be faithful where you're at and love the moment. Like live fully today. Yes. Live fully, love deeply, lead authentically. And so that's just how I lived. It wasn't about platform. It wasn't how big the company was. It was just being faithful and obedient. Yes to what was given to me at that moment. And I think it was a great training ground. And, and I went to this one place and they had a group of five leaders and it was, it was a, a church and a, a pioneering church. And with these five leaders, I spent eight hours bringing my leadership training to the table. And at the end, there was this one man that came up and said, Melody, could you do this in the marketplace? And I said, I do do it in the marketplace. And he goes, ah, like, that's great. Long story short, he was an executive of a multi-billion dollar company. And at that time, they had 47,000 employees globally. Wow. And that was my first big, 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 big company. And that gave so much credibility to what I brought to the table because I went in there um, over 
well, over quite a few years. But in seven years, this one division in the company went from the lowest money-making division to the number one money-making division. That executive went from the uh, president of that division to one of the te- top 12 executives in that whole company. Wow. Because of the success. People left better paying jobs to serve under him because of his leadership methodologies. And, and it was all kingdom. It was all and kingdom. So it, it, is, it was just so powerful. And then that gave me credibility because when people knew I went to that corporation, yes. then I must be good enough to go here or there or whatever. Yeah. And so that was like uh, that moment that I was totally unprepared for. I just was giving my level best to five people. Yes. Eight hours giving my very best, pouring out my heart to these five people, not knowing in the room the one that would open up the door to launch me yeah. into uh, the, the visible competency uh, or the visible voice that yes. God called me to carry. So I suspect that there's a lot of people who are listening who, you know, we have some people who are entrepreneurs that their audience that they focus in is believers, right? But the majority of people, that's not their audience. You know, it's not their target market or whatever. And people who are in this, this uh, coaching and consulting and all of those things, a lot of them are just like, I, like, I have a heart for the kingdom of God, and, but I'm showing up in places that I can't come, I can't come with you know, the King James and the, <laughs> I can't come, not even the new King James. Like I can't come in like that, but yet there's this richness that, you know, God's been taking me through that has a practical application here. So talk to me about your experience of being able to translate what you are getting from God and the word and what he's showing you and then translating it into something that people can really grab hold on to. Well, when I go into another nation and I speak English, they have to translate it into their language. Otherwise, all my talking, they wouldn't understand anything. There would be no connection to their heart, no connection to their soul, their thinking, their mindsets, their growth. And so um, actually, after that encounter in Edinburgh, I came back and I spent three years reading marketplace books, not Christian books but leadership books, marketplace, because I had to learn the language. Now I worked in government before I got saved and I did do business, but after 20 years, you need to go back and say, what is the language of business today? And then emotional intelligence was the big hot topic. And I go, man, I can weave the kingdom into emotional intelligence. And I literally made emotional intelligence my own message. And, um, and so that's how I began to bring some things to the table. But the key was I had to learn the language of the group in which I was speaking to. Yes. So, or to which I was speaking to. So if I was in, when I go to um, the educational system, I have to speak educational language, business language to business people, uh, governmental language to governmental people. It's just what you need to do. And otherwise they won't understand our get on fire or, you know, let me tell you about this. You know, they, they won't. They won't relate to it. They won't connect to it. It's a language they've never heard. The kingdom of God is so relevant to every aspect of society. We don't have to use King James. We don't have to use biblical analogies, but we can take the nature and the character of the kingdom and put it in a language that people can understand. And when they can understand it, then it shifts the way they think. So I can imagine you in these books, reading industry specific books for the space that you're headed into. And as you're reading these books is what's happening that is like, is Holy Spirit like enlightening aspects of like bringing back to your memory things that you've read in scripture, you've studied, and then you're able to kind of go back and then you just start pulling this thing together. Like what's, what was, how does this thing actually come together for you? Whether people realize it or not. Anything that produces success that will empower, uh, heal, uh, bring forth, you know, fruit in any way is kingdom. And so as I was reading those things, not only were scriptures exploding on the inside of me, but aspects of my voice was exploding. 
This so when good. I took my passion for justice, using power for good, when I saw a leadership principle like emotional intelligence, how do we treat people? How do we manage our internal world? Uh, can we preach that biblically? Of course we can. And how can we take concepts of justice in the world's perspective and take kingdom principles of, of justice and impact our world with that? And so basically I was discovering a language that literally ignited a fire of my voice. So I wasn't just trying to get a language on some business principle so I could sound businessy. <laughs> no, I found the business principles that were a reflection of my voice. So good. My passion, my calling. And and I just began to take what, what was on the inside of me and just bring the language so that someone else could understand it in those different spheres. And of course, it's a work in progress. Yes. I started in one thing built on another and built onto another into another. And then I started writing books about this because uh, I'd go into a place and it was really impacting people. And uh, I thought, man, if I could hand them a book uh, with all the things that I'm talking about and give them a greater depth of science. See, you know, I use scripture in preaching to the church, but I use science uh, in the world. And yes. guess what? I have found so much science to back up absolutely everything that is biblical. Yeah. And so uh, the fact is, eventually science has to line up with the creator. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, right. It is so powerful. So I just use a different language. I just use a different source. So I'm not going in there with uh, emotional sentimental sentimentalism or ideologies that make Melody feel good. No, I'm going in with objective facts that are founded upon objective, absolute truth. Yeah. So good. So good. Okay. So I'm curious because, you know, when we're doing business in partnership with the Lord and we're being led and empowered by the Holy Spirit and what we're doing, oftentimes we'll run into T times where we have wisdom that we didn't actually have, like wisdom comes out of your mouth that okay. you didn't have, you didn't know anything about it. Answers and solutions for people that you had no clue about, couldn't put those things together happen. I know I'm looking at you shaking your head. They don't have the ability to see you, but I'm seeing you shake your head. I would love for you to share just a story. I, I just want to ignite people into this oh, I'll tell business you. with him. So share some of the goodness of what that's like of being led in the most supernatural. I could tell you tons of stories, but um, I believe in the gifts of the spirit. And uh, one of the gifts of the spirit are words of knowledge and words of wisdom. And honestly, in all the years of pastoring, I, I know I've had lots of words of knowledge and, and I'm sure I've touched words of wisdom, but never to the point that I did in the marketplace. Because when you go in as a, call, a consultant, they expect you to have an answer and they ask you a question and you have no clue. You're like, I have no clue how to answer this. And then wisdom bubbles up. And I've learned to inquire of the Lord, not just wait till a word of wisdom supernaturally just comes, but inquire of the Lord for a word of wisdom. And I'll tell you this one. Well, I have so many stories, but this story I was doing, I was in a public school in our nation's capital. And uh, it was a charter school. And so they brought in the disenfranchised, those that had come out of gangs, those that had come out of prison. And they were like 16 years old to 26 years old. And, and in that school, the prejudice was horrific, not just with the students, but with the teachers and the staff. And um, so you might have been African-American or you could have been uh, uh, from Africa. And so there was a division between the blacks and there was a division between uh, the Hispanics, you know, those that were from this nation or that. There was so much racism, so much prejudice, so much divisiveness. And um, so before school started, they contacted me and they said, would you come in and try to help us change the culture? And, uh, and they had tried this before. And, um, so I went in and it was three days of training and I went in with all my stuff <laughs> and after a few hours of my amazing stuff. It was not pretty. I mean, people were rolling their eyes at each other. They wouldn't sit with each other. It was the, I had never been in such an antagonistic, uh, disrespectful environment in my life. 
And I went back to the hotel room and I just spent almost all night just praying. And I said, God, it, there's no, nothing I carry can change this. Uh, only you can by your spirit. And so I went in the next day. And a, one thing that I bring to the table is I try to help people discover what manner of man or woman they are as an individual, you know, discovering their personal purpose, uh, their voice, their message and that type of thing. And so I was going through that process. And uh, the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to do it individually. And I got 25 people in a room. Well, you just don't ignore 25 people and sit down with one person that you don't do that as a consultant. You know, it's just like, that's not what you do. But I knew God spoke. So I said, okay, let me use this as an example. And I sat down with that one person. And as I went around the world, world, went around the room, not only were there words of knowledge, but there were words of wisdom. And uh, I sat down with this one girl. And I'm, as I'm doing this, people are getting engaged. They're getting consumed in how I'm working with each individual. And I went to this one gal and I started asking her questions. And usually this takes me a good half hour. And I mean, it's happening in three to five minutes. Wow. And uh, which is supernatural. Yes. <laughs> this, one, uh, this one gal, I asked her a question. She goes, I don't know. I don't know. She had an attitude. And I said, well, how does this feel to you? And I made this statement. She burst into tears. She goes, oh my gosh, you're an amazing consultant. <laughs> and I'm thinking, God, out of my mouth came her purpose. Yeah. And by the time we were done that room, people were no longer in, longer connecting to race, ethnicity, age or anything. Now they're connecting to the heart of a person's purpose. People got up and they started gravitating to people who were carrying a like passion and a like purpose. And that shifted the atmosphere in that whole place. And that next day and three quarters were the most impactful days, healing days. Then they had me come into the school and I taught in every single class. And um, the administrator of the school, no, the principal of the school said the whole atmosphere of that whole school changed in that year, not just with the staff, but when it happens with the staff, it happens with the students. It was such a productive year. And the administrator told me and said, Melody, I didn't even want to do this. I didn't need some kumbaya session, but I am amazed at what was accomplished. And see, I, you know, I almost felt guilty not saying, you know, that wasn't me. That was, right. me, you, know? <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, I couldn't do that. And I went back to the hotel and I said, God, I'm struggling because I, I'm so humbled. And I just cried and cried and cried. And I said, I'm so humble because only you could have done this. Yeah. And he spoke to me and he said, Melody, some plants, some water, but I'm the one who brings the increase. And he spoke, he said, you never let your children watch a demonically inspired movie. Why? Well, it would give access to darkness. And he says, when you go in with light, when you go in with truth and people take it and receive it, they're giving access to the kingdom of God. They're giving access to light. And so what it does is it paves a way for God to do only what he can do. Yeah. And it set me free after that to recognize, just be faithful to the kingdom and biblical principles and let God do what he does while I do what he's called me to do. That right there is rich. So it just pretty much... It, that shifted the entire atmosphere of what was going on. Oh, it was amazing. And, you know, there's so many illustrations like that where words of knowledge, you know, came in. I had a multi-billion dollar executive. Um, he called me up and this was after the consulting day. He called me up and he said, Melody, this is what I'm dealing with. And as he's telling me, I'm going, God, you got to speak to me because I don't have an answer. And once again, a word wisdom came forth and he says, okay. And you know, what's amazing. I've pastor for a lot of years. You can sit and say a bus say at the Lord. You can give bottom line, absolute truth. And they're going great sermon. <laughs> and don't do anything. And then, but here, this multi-billion dollar executive says, okay, I'll do that. And it like shocked me. And, um, he can call me back like two months later. And he says, Melody, I did exactly everything you said. And let me tell you the results. 
it literally shifted everything because guess what? God knows he carries all wisdom and he gave us just one little word of his infinite wisdom that shifted a company. That's so good. Have any of these, have any of these kind of interactions, engagements that you've had with coaches, leadership teams in all these various industries, has the movement of the Holy Spirit and interaction with someone where they saw results ever landed you in a conversation when someone opened up on a conversation around spirituality? Oh, yes. In fact, I've led more to the Lord through my consulting company than I have as a pastor. Come on. Now, mostly it's Christians that come to church. And when you go into the world, you're with non-believers. So there's a greater percentage that that can happen. But I'll give, can I give you another story? Please. Stories. I love this story. (laughs) So, um, I was at an international government and it was not a democratic government. I even struggled going there because I didn't necessarily want to promote their governmental philosophies. But once again, the Lord says, you touch the mindset. And when the righteous rule, people rejoice. So I went in there and I spoke on justice is what I did on the power of justice and the power of leadership. And, um, and I'm very authentic. Uh, just like I'm talking to you, I'm like that in the boardroom. I'm that everywhere. I'm just yes. Melody. I've learned to just be me and do it for him, period. That's and, it. Because um, authenticity touches hearts more than all the intelligence in the world. Come on. And, um, so I'm there and I'm real. And I start telling them how um, the people that they rule have experiential realities of pain and suffering. And you have the ability to, to bring change, you know, in those things. And, and I said, for me, I was molested from the time I was two years old to nine years old. And then I talked, you know, about how that affected me. And, um, uh, I, so I did my, and it was just, I threw it out there. It wasn't like I capitalized on it. I just was being vulnerable. Yeah. And at the end, that the head of this governmental group stood up and through the interpreter said, Dr. Melody shared what happened to her. You know, they didn't talk about justice. They just talked about what happened to me. And they said, Melody, instead of leaving after lunch, would you be willing to come back and share how you got healed? Wow. And I thought, Help me, Jesus. So yeah. all through that fancy governmental lunch, I'm sitting there just praying inside of me the whole time saying, God, you got to anoint me because they asked me for my story. OK, that's right. And so I had to be wise on that story because Christianity wasn't really accepted in this place. And <laughs> so I had to be very careful. And um, but it was my story and they asked for it. So I just I, I just trust God. So after I was done, I went out. And they gave me 50 minutes. And so for about 45 minutes, 46 minutes, I talked about not details, but what happened to me and how it produced shame and it produced fear. And I began to believe lies. And the more lies I believed, the worst decisions I made in my life and how I sabotaged my life because of how I viewed myself and what happened to me didn't define me. You know, all those things. Yeah. I shared all that. And then in the last, you know, five minutes max, less than five minutes, I said, now for me, the beginning of my healing was when I received Jesus Christ. And very quickly, I shared the plan of salvation, not to them, but about me. Yes. And said, you know, I... I discovered Jesus came and he died on the cross for me. And then in the midst of my pain and suffering, he paid the price so I could have peace. And I took that and I received that and I believe that. And, and I said, then I said, thank you and sat down. (laughs) And this same person got up and said, Dr. Melody, would you be willing to pray for people? And I about fell off my chair and I said, I would be so honored. So they put me in a side room all by myself and one by one. And these governmental leaders were equivalent to U.S. senators. Okay, this is high level legislative, you know, governmental leaders. And one by one, those who wanted to came in. And as I was praying for them and I every person I inquired of the Lord, do I go there in asking about salvation or don't I? It's good. 
Everyone I inquired that I heard a yes, I asked. And, um, but as I was praying for them, I had words of knowledge for healing. I had all those things like, how did you know I had di- diabetes or whatever? Yeah. It was powerful. Wow. And, um, at the end of that day, long story short, I led five to the Lord. Five people who legislate for a nation to the Lord. So good. One of those people had direct access to the head of the nation. And to this day are still undercover. But being an influencer to that government and to highest levels of leadership in the nation. And they're even being, you know, uh, privately discipled. I kind of spoke in broad terms because I don't want to expose too much. Of course. That was that I went back again, once again, and just cried and cried and cried because you recognize I don't have the power to do that. I don't have the power to open those doors. But one of my greatest voices is to just value all of humanity. And if we truly value people, it'll, it will build a bridge across any divide, because that governmental thing, they hated Americans, they didn't like white people, and women didn't have a whole much value. So I kind of was in bad shape in all of that. (laughs) (laughs) Triple doozy. (laughs) Yeah, I was like, three strikes, you're out. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you, at the end of that, before we went to the lunch, people were, were coming up when at first they were sitting there with their arms crossed. They came up hugging me and kissing me and thanking me. And I went back there, I think it was like a year, year and a half later, I went back to that same group of people. And um, I mean, it just, it rocks you when you realize I can do nothing unless God makes a way for me. And, but you know what? That takes all the pressure off because if he opens the door, the grace is already there to go through it. Yes. I don't have to beg him to anoint me because he's already anointed me. I don't have to beg him, you know, to make it successful because if he opened the door, then it already is successful. And the Holy Spirit is already there to take whatever I'm bringing to the table in the midst of my imperfections, whatever I bring to the table, he has the ability to bring light to it, to bring revelation to it, to touch the depths of a heart. Yeah, that's so, so good. And I loved how you shared, because I thought this was really key, because you're valuing humanity, each individual, each individual person, you didn't come in there with this expectation that just because I'm going to pray with all these people, that I'm going to have a salvation conversation with them. You were seeking the Father's heart for every single individual. You didn't have an agenda. Your agenda was, Father, what do you want to see happen yes. in this situation? Because you yeah. knew if it was connected and aligned with his heart, that that person is prepared for what's about to come forth from you. Can, can I tell you another story? Please. Which fits exactly what you said. I was in uh, before another government in another nation. And um, actually, it was there uh, what would be like our Treasury Department, Department of Treasury. And in that department, there was probably about a thousand employees in this nation. And when they wanted me to come in, usually I go to more like the executive level type things. And um, they said, no, they wanted every single person to hear me. So we were in this huge venue and there were so many people I could not even see the back of the room. Uh, It was in a nation. A lot of people were in Muslim guard, Buddhist garb, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, And I went in there and the first thing, uh, it, well, in the morning, they took half the government and then uh, or half the Department of Treasury. And then in the last half of the day, they took the other half. And so I did the same thing twice. And as I was doing this in the morning, like people would not look at me in the eyes. There was shame. You know, uh, I, I, there was just shame. And I, I just saw so many hurting people. And I thought, man, I don't care what's on my agenda right now. I've got to come against everything that makes them feel shame around me. Wow. 
you know, a lot of times a speaker comes in and on the, on the platform and, and somebody thinks, well, you know, I'm not as good as them. And they start comparing themselves and it literally shuts down this amazing gift inside of a person. And so we got to get rid of the shame so we can build the bridge. And so I was in that environment. And so I pulled out, uh, I think it was a hundred dollar bill. Um, and so I pulled it out and I said, does anybody here want a hundred dollars? Nobody did anything. They had their heads down, won't look at me. I said, there's no one here that wants a hundred dollars. And this one little hand began to, you know, I said, okay. And I pulled them up. Now everyone's going to want to use this illustration now that I've given <laughs> it out. And, uh, but, uh, uh, they, I called them up and I took the hundred dollars. I said, you want it? And they said, yes. And they reached out to take it. And I pulled it back from them and I crumbled it up. And I said, you're not talking to the money. You're not worth the paper you're printed on. You are devalued. You are this. And I began to degrade it and devalue this money. I threw it on the ground and started stomping on this. And, and then I picked it up, this crumbled dollar or a hundred dollars that was stepped on. And I turned to the woman and I said, do you still want it? <laughs> and she said, yes. And I said, why? And it's because it still holds its value. And then I said, everyone, listen to me. No matter what's happened to you, no matter what's been said about you, even the things you've said and thought about yourself, even the injustices, even the abuse of power, no matter what has happened to you, nothing takes away your value. And in this place, it, they had it set up because they had breakfast you know, there. And through that whole place, I saw all these white napkins come up and people were wiping tears away from their eyes. And now instead of looking down, they were looking right at me. And then I had a platform to begin to do my, my Your training. Thing. <laughs> yes, my thing. And, um, but all my thing is woven in validation. Yes. So referring back to um, the science of value. I kept referring back to the value that they hold. And it, it is just so powerful because when we truly value the individual. And so afterwards, in, in both times, I was just flooded with people. And then th there's something so powerful about being uh, a business leader that really recognizes I'm a business person because I'm here to serve somebody. Yes. It's, you know, I, I believe in win-win. I do believe in win-win and you have a business because you make money and that's a compensation for what you're bringing to the table, but it's about serving. It's about giving. And I went to the, to the head of the department, they call him the controller in this nation, the controller of the department of treasury. And I said, I know our day ends like at three or four, but I don't have to get on the plane or I don't have to get up until two o'clock. I'll work till midnight. And if you have anyone, I'll meet with people individually. If there's key people, you know, I'll spend my, you know, I'll spend the evening investing. And they go, you're kidding me. Are you, you're willing to do that? And I said, yes. And they said, okay, we won't take you past 10 o'clock. We won't do that to you. But I spent the rest of the night uh, doing individual meetings with key peoples in the Department of Treasury of that nation. And hearts connected. And that once again gave me an opportunity to feel out the conversation to see yes. if I had a bridge. Yes. To talk about the things of God. But yeah. I always wait for someone to open the door. Ooh. I never rush in there or push. I, you know, in the Bible it talks about they went and said, what must I do to be saved? Okay. It's yes. like waiting for that door to open. And when the door opens, Hey, it's easy to go through. That's it. But you know, it was one of those opportunities once again, to see how value builds bridges. And when people know they're loved and that's exactly what Jesus did for us. He so valued us that while we were enemies to God, Christ died for us. Yeah. Not just sinners, but enemies. He died for us and he paid the highest price to buy us back 
because he attached so much value to us. And isn't it the goodness of God that leads us to a change of thinking, right? Repentance is changing a mindset. It's his goodness that changes the way I think about him, about me, about others, and about my worldview. Yeah. Uh, That's so rich. I have this question. I feel like there's people who are listening who have this question, so I'm going to ask it. There are some people who are listening who are like, wow, this sounds amazing, but how do I build confidence in like, like that I'm hearing him? Like, I feel like, I feel like the Lord's maybe telling me something. I'm not sure. What was your journey like of just cultivating a confidence to release what you believe to be a word of wisdom concerning a situation or a word of knowledge concerning a situation? I know what this story is like for me, but I'm so curious to know what this journey has been like for you. Well, first of all, I think we recognize in hearing the voice of God, it's through by reason of use, our senses are exercised to discern what is the voice of the Lord or what isn't. And um, and one thing I've learned is that when I hear the voice of the Lord in a situation like that, and I inquire, it's like something that is dropped in my spirit. It, it's not something I was thinking or processing or praying about. It's, it's just revelation that is dropped or, or words that are dropped or a picture that's just dropped in my spirit. I, I didn't initiate it from my mind. It, it was bubbling up out of my spirit. Um, I love the illustration of a red, yellow, green light. And Tell me about it. Have you ever been in a situation where you want to do something and you felt oh, the red light and so yes. you didn't go there because you didn't feel comfortable? Something wasn't quite right, you know, or there was times you hit a yellow light and that doesn't mean speed up and go through it. It means caution. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on who's driving. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on who's driving. I don't want to be in the driver's seat in this one, do I? Right. So if God puts on the yellow light, I want to do caution, right? Yes. And so, you know, you feel caution. So you, you pull back and you continue to inquire, but you also know when inside of you, you feel that green light. And I also know that the Holy spirit dwells within my human spirit. And many times it might sound like melody because I've been hanging out with the Holy Ghost for, uh, you know, 40, almost 44 years. In yes. February, it'll be 44 years. I've been hanging out with him. And so sometimes it bubbles up inside of me and uh, it, there's two filters. Does it align with the word of God and does it align with his heart? And so when it bubbles up, it aligns with the word, it aligns with the heart. Then and I feel that green, like, go for it, I do it. Yeah. What's the worst thing can happen? I make a mistake. It doesn't produce. Because in the marketplace arena, I'm not saying God says, you know, I'm just presenting my consulting, quote unquote, expertise. Yes. I have a right to my opinion. I have a right to the processes of the development of my leadership methodologies and all those other things. And so I bring it to the table. And guess what? Amazingly, people recognize. It's like, whoa, I was in this one. It was a huge, huge corporation. And uh, now this is the only time I did anything that almost sounded Christian uh, (laughs) in in public. And and it kind of slipped out. Well, I don't want to say it slipped out. It was there and I go, I'm going for it. But I was speaking about servant leadership. And I said, you know, until you lose your life, you're never going to find it. And everyone in that room went, oh, and they gasped. And, and it cracked me up. I am laughing on the inside. And I thought the power of the word of God. And so I didn't say it King James, but <laughs> it was very close to scripture, you know. <laughs> but the, the revelation of that grasped them that if I'm not serving somebody else, I'm going to lose what I have. But when I lose myself for the sake of someone else, I actually find my voice, find my purpose, actually accomplish what I set out to accomplish. And I mean, that's not just good business. 
that is absolute truth that if we practice it, it will produce. Oh my goodness. Okay. Would you please pray? Oh, I sure will. For the listeners. There's so many themes of some of the things that you've said that I'm like, oh, there's just such a release of freedom on the inside of you for people to really walk this thing out and do the things that God's put on their heart to do and to be kingdom influencers in these spaces yes. to find their own voice, right? And so if you would please do the honor of praying, I'd so appreciate it. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up every person in the sound of my voice. And right now in the name of Jesus, I first pray for a supernatural revelation of how valuable they are that they would see their worth, that they would see their voice, that they would see the giftings and talents and all that you placed inside of them. Lord, to, to be ones that will use that to not only build the kingdom, but to touch lives uh, in the most powerful, impactful way. So Lord, I thank you that they would see their value. They would see the value of what they bring to the table and that they would recognize that you're the one that put that there. And so you are committed to their success. You are committed to their voice being released. You're committed to whatever they put their hand to, to prosper and wherever the sole of their foot treads to prosper. And so, Lord, I just thank you that you are making a way where there seems to be no way. You're opening up doors that no man can open, that, Lord, you're giving a place for their voice and their message. And, Lord, I thank you as they run to you, the author and the finisher of their faith as they hear your voice, as they allow the passion you placed inside of them uh, to grow and develop and mature, and as they're faithful in the little things, knowing you'll give them greater things, Lord, I just thank you as they do that, you're building their confidence, you're building their boldness, you're building their security, not in their strength, but in who you are in them, in your grace, in your power, in your purposes. And so in the name of Jesus, I just thank you and praise you for each one, that they would see what they carry and they would be willing to continue to pay the price, to invest in to uh, who they are and what they carry, uh, to treat what they have as valuable, uh, to sacrifice for those things, just like the parable of the talents, uh, the ones who stored what they had uh, increased and multiplied. And so, Lord, I just thank you that they would see value in the voice that they carry. They would not try uh, to look like anyone else, but they would discover what makes them uniquely different and celebrate the uniqueness of what they carry and develop the uniqueness of what they carry. Oh, we can learn from each other and we definitely need revelation from your spirit. But Lord, I thank you that in those defining moments of our life, we see you, but we also see who we are in you. So I released that, that to them right now in the name of Jesus. I call forth that gifting. I call forth that passion. I thank you that our gifts not only make room for us, but it even brings provision for us. So I just release that on behalf of each one right now in the name of Jesus. I decree that their voice is being heralded. I decree that you're going to open up doors for them to reach um, every level of influence from the, 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 the most meek, the most hurting, the most lowly to the highest levels of society. Lord, you know where you've placed them. You know where you've called them to make a difference in the world. And right now, I just decree that each one is a culture champion. Yes. Rising up, taking the culture of the kingdom and invading the cultures of this earth. We celebrate the local church. We celebrate those things. But Lord, you haven't called us to build just a subculture. You've called us to take the culture of the kingdom into the world so that we can launch and be a part of the greatest revival the earth has ever seen. So we can disciple nations. And so, Lord, I thank you that through their businesses, through their entrepreneurial spirit, Lord God, that's so prophetic. It's so apostolic. An entrepreneur has to hear your voice. An entrepreneur has to know how to build it. So, Lord, I just release that apostolic prophetic mantling right now that empowers them to do supernaturally what can never be done naturally. 
Lord, your hands upon them. You are for them. You're not against them. You're on their side. They have nothing to fear. And Lord, I just thank you that they will not be controlled by the emotions of today or even the experiential reality of the past or the present. But Lord God, they're looking uh, to the why they're doing what they're doing. Because when we can see why, it motivates us to establish the how so we can walk in the fullness. In Jesus' name, I bless each one right now. In Jesus' name. Oh, Melody, I love me some you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Um, how do people get connected with what you're doing? Where do they go? Well, uh, I've written a few books, and uh, you can go on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all those places. Uh, one is Higher Living Leadership, uh, and the byline is influencing. Uh, influencing society as an instrument of justice. And I just released at the beginning of this year, a book called Unmasking Prejudice. If you're passionate about the validation message, it's in both of these, um, but it's Unmasking Prejudice. The byline is silencing the internal voice of bigotry. And um, that inspired a movement. So people can follow, uh, follow me, Instagram, Twitter, and all those other things, uh, Melody Hilton or hashtag stop devaluation and you can see my youtube channel uh stop devaluation and it's it's so powerful it's all marketplace both of those books are marketplace i do have a biblical edition of the leadership one uh but uh it's all marketplace because i want to touch the world yes. so right now in on my youtube channel i have like 70 some videos and i'm doing my stories and now maybe shay you'll want to do a my story with me <laughs> Uh, be delighted. And whoever's listening to me, you got a story. We need to bring our story to the world to give it hope, to bring light. And so you can connect uh, through the Stopped Evaluation. My website is Dr. Dr. Melody, M-E-L-O-D-Y-E dot com. And you can see what I, can, what I do in business. Dr. Melody dot com. We'll make sure to link up all of those resources in our show notes. Thank you so much for joining. Really, really appreciate, love what you shared and appreciate the prayer release at the end. So thankful. Thank you so much. I was so honored. Love you bunches. Thanks for joining us on the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, we encourage you to subscribe and spread the word. And don't forget, you can gain access to even more resources, plus a thriving community of fire starters by visiting our website at kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com.